Hello and welcome to the boardroom discussion on recruitment contests and objective analysis of its effectiveness as a hiring medium. I'm Sukriti Adhavanshi, your host for the session. And today, I'm going to discuss the relevance of recruitment contests with four brilliant leaders. The war for tech talent is more gruesome than ever, and hiring managers are in the spotlight for bringing in the most skilled people on board. Companies are exploring new age tools that can help them assess the candidates' accuracy. Methods like hackathons, recruitment contests are contemporarily being used. So to know more about the relevance and usefulness of these objective analysis, I have with me Ina Rastogi, Vice President Human Capital Management Saibej, Shekhar Garisa, who is the Chief Emerging Business and Corporate Development at Quest, Ali Bapanikari, Senior Manager, HR Synopsis, and Gaurav Mangla, Co-Founder and CTO from Pickle. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I would request all of you to please introduce yourselves and give me the opening remarks. So, Tina, we'll start with you, please. Okay. Hi. Um, uh, thanks for giving us this uh, opportunity, Sukriti. Uh, so, I basically head uh, the HR function at Cybage. Cybage uh, is a software development company which is headquartered out of Pune. We are a product engineering organization, 7,300 uh, employees strong. Okay, and talent acquisition obviously is one of the uh, major functions in all the HR function which takes the limelight today. And I come with around 20 years of industry experience. Uh, most of my stint has been with Infosys. Around 13 years I've spent with Infosys uh, in various roles, right from recruitment to business HR to, um, you know, digitization to playing a transformation, um, you know, HR uh, at Infosys. I did have a small stint at manufacturing where I could see the manufacturing uh, side of HR. And I really look forward to this session. And in fact, I'm excited to be at the session because I'm sure there would be a lot of best practices which I would be uh, able to take from the leaders who are uh, on this panel. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, Sekhar, we'd move to you. Hi, Sukriti. Thank you so much for having me here. And hi, everyone else on the call. Uh, my name is Shekhar. I am uh, the Chief of Emerging Businesses and Head of Strategy for Quest Group. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know Quest Group, we are India's largest private sector employer. Uh, we have more than 350,000 employees on our roles. Uh, so as you can imagine, you know, we are uh, both, uh, we're probably the biggest consumers of talent in the country. We go through over a million resumes in the year. So, you know, uh, it's a burning platform that we are all on in terms of this war for talent. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also find ourselves on other side of the platform because we also our, uh, we also run businesses which supply talent to organizations across the country. So, you know, we are on either sides of the table and, you know, and this is one of the biggest challenges for us to solve for, you know, uh, to find the right person for the right job. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, over the years, all of us have tried different things, uh, you know, whether it's aptitude tests or, you know, uh, hackathons or group discussions or whatnot, you know, video analytics, you put in the latest of the technology in it, but it still needs a secret sauce to still find the right person for the right job. And uh, yeah, and I, in my uh, career of 17 years, I've spent a number of years with PNG, McKinsey, uh, most recently at Microsoft before I came here. So, you know, uh, I've always believed the toughest thing anyone needs to do in an organization is to get the right person in, and that's like half the job done. So. You know, very keen to see, you know, what, what's the experience been for my fellow panelists and, you know, hopefully share my experiences and learn from the experiences of others. Thanks, Shikhar. I think you've set up the context right. And uh, in terms of expectations, I am very much excited to know what you as, uh, you know, recruitment leaders are doing in your organizations. Of course, I would like to know that. Thank you for that. Gaurav? Yeah. Thanks, Sukriti, first of all, for this opportunity, and, you know, to, you know, sit on a panel with so much experience guys and like a uh, pretty younger in in their both experience and age so i am like a like i co-founded picker in 2015 graduated in 2013 and then you know picker was my second startup my first startup word was in the hiring space uh, where you know i co-founded optimized bits which was a job fair kind of a portal and also a live interview portal so we had a peer-to-peer -peer video conferencing as well as you know whiteboard which later transformed into a compiler 
so we saw products like hacker and hacker earth and all you know so we thought that you know why only for non tech interviews do it for tech interviews as well so in picker uh, you know we have a very different kind of a journey on hiring first our models uh, our model business model has pivoted a lot and you know we have hired different kind of people for different business models but from past 3 years it has been a very roller coaster ride we have grown from almost 30 people to 400 odd people and uh, one of the company values that we have inculcated which we had like almost seen in the environment wherever we have worked is hiring a plus talent so we try to hire the best talent we have folks from stanford harvard uh, you know all premium colleges as well non premium colleges as well and you know uh, hiring offering joining all three uh, we have seen all the challenges of all three phases and you know we compete with uh, the main competition comes from other startups as well so a lot of vc money is flowing in the ecosystem a lot of hikes are happening a candidate comes and next day he has a 2x offer so there are a lot of new challenges as well and i'm also looking forward to learn and you know establish some practices from my fellow panelists in my company as well wonderful i'm sure you're going to uh, you know get a lot of insights from each one of us here uh, ariva thank you sukriti and thank you so much for having me here um feels great to have a fellow infosion here as well tina hi um and uh, the space that i come from sukriti is a sweet spot of uh, talent and the demand and supply gap so synopsis just to introduce uh, this organization which i am part of um, is at the heart and heart of technology um, it was founded close to around 35 years back in 1986 and uh, we are a global leader when it comes to electronic design automation and semiconductor intellectual property so any device that you hold today which has an electronic component of it the design of the chip uh, the software to that has been designed by synopsis so that's the kind of outreach that probably this organization has i have had this opportunity of last uh, uh, couple of decades that i have worked with organizations uh, which are always rich on value and uh, have a global reach uh, be it uh, the largest stint with infosys and then reuters um, a stint with the rpg group um, and then now with synopsis i manage uh, the regional hr role for uh, south asia which is um, regions in india as well as sri lanka now for us um, the high tech industry goes through this talent uh, demand supply deficit and for us the assets are nothing but uh, people and you will be fascinated to know that uh, almost 80% of our earnings actually is invested on talent so that is the kind of focus that we um, as a leadership commitment provide to develop and nurture talent but having said that the demographics of the uh, of this side of the world is that once you do your engineering you tend to get into an infosys or a tcs or a wipro and then how many of them i am myself an electronics telecommunication engineer but i never worked on a diode or a triode before till i joined maybe a synopsis so in that situation um, when we hire in bulk from the iits and the nits of the world um, it becomes really imperative for us that what is the differentiation that synopsis should provide which would make somebody to not go for the most lucrative one but understand that what synopsis would offer and that's where i think uh, my placement here is quite strategic for me as well as uh, for the organization to understand that what all we do in all these great organizations and i look forward to learn from my uh, panel members and also share a few things that we have done which gives us an edge in the industry of uh, having one of the largest uh, market share as well when it comes to attracting the best talent so thank you again sukriti very interesting uh, aliva and uh, you know with that uh, note where you just mentioned that uh, creating a better experience for the candidates where you are trying to involve them and uh, you know make them a part of the process of the hiring entirely that matters a lot because uh, it industry is a place where you know for example you you know just just found out that tira is on the panel you you guys have worked together so it's it's a very small industry where you know people keep switching jobs from this tech company to the other and uh, that is kind of a reputation that an organization should be very conscious of while taking a call uh, and creating that experience because uh, people tend to talk about you and the word of mouth that we talk is is very important 
because social media is 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 has empowered all of us of course and anything that happens people tend to put it across but when they share real life experiences that's a different uh, you know concept altogether so i think that that's a very fair point made and thank you for giving me that start i would now uh, move to the little sentiments that i was just you know researching while uh, doing this you know uh, preparing for this actually so uh, there's this research which actually says that when we talk of recruitment challenges and contests according to the survey 20% of developers think uh, you know these these recruitment processes as their important consideration but while you know for 35% uh, for hr professionals this is the most important consideration when it comes to a job offer so you know we can very well understand the contrast that this holds when it comes to these two uh, people you know uh, confronting and coming together to actually roll out the offer and getting hired so i would want to you know understand to start with uh, that how recruitment contests to you know has played a very important role in hiring competent tech professionals so ali i would want you to uh, you know give me the insights for this first sure supriti um so recruitment contest as a concept like i think uh, most of our panel members in the intro itself mentioned you also said that the tried and tested methods are all there and uh, like i said uh, we go to the premium colleges we are there in the day one slots we are there in the pre placement um, uh, discussions but what we realize is that you know the engagement and also the awareness so we operate out of three different aspects Sukriti, we talk about connect, we talk about invest, and we talk about innovate. Now we feel that if these three aspects are touched upon, I think a new college uh, graduate will have all the interest to choose an employer over the other. Now to make that happen, this made us to go back. Um, if you uh, you know empathize with the design thinking principles, it really brings back uh, brings you back to the. whiteboard and you uh, do a brainstorming with a few college grads who had joined us in the uh, from the previous batches because they would know the sentiments and the pulse inside out we spoke to a few placement officers we spoke to a few managers who hire these new college grads and then we also spoke to our staffing uh, team members because they are the ones who are closest uh, to these campus recruitment drives um and this was almost at the time of when we were getting into uh, the lockdown mode where everything was getting virtual because in the past or in the good old olden days if i may uh, call it so it was pretty easy that you reach the college and you do certain things out there but here everything was getting really new and the students were also pretty stressed out with this whole online classes and how things would span out for the placements etc our objective with the recruitment contest was one that we spot the talent pretty early so instead of going and um, and this was of course based on the discussion that happened through this core team uh, coming together brainstorming coming up with ideas doing our amount of benchmarking uh, we uh, we rolled out these contests not for the fourth year engineering students but for the third year engineering students and that was pretty early in the cycle of their understanding of what the high tech industry is um even though the fancy terms and the fancy glorified um you know things that a, a college graduate really looks for this industry is not uh, one of those which offers that they need to understand the kind of exposure they get the kind of core technologies on the, on which they work and the kind of advancement that synopsis really offers where we are designing a chip for the mars orbiter we are designing a chip for tesla we are also designing a chip for an apple phone so hence we came up with a concept of doing an innovation contest where it was sort of an idea thon uh, but then the uh, context was very contextual where we said that come up with uh, smart ideas in the eda uh, technologies or in semiconductor technologies or you can use any of the latest one in ai or ml but come up with technology ideas which really could solve the covid uh, pandemic in terms of early detection um uh, you know curing it and also coming up with prevention mechanism and that sort of ignited uh, so much of an interest about uh, the mm-hmm. organization as well as what we do uh, that it it um, is now reflecting in terms of the success metrics and when we are now going back to them for this year's placement uh, talks there is an early uh, indicator about knowing the organization recall value as well as 
um, really remembering the experience that they had in terms of the mentoring connect we provided or uh, all that they had learned. So for us, the recall value, which is in terms of the connect, the investment that went in because of the rapport that built up and the innovation that we drew uh, really uh, you know, made us uh, feel that these contests are worthwhile to invest on. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, listening to this because uh, this is very important, especially for uh, early grads to understand how the industry works is completely different than what they actually learn in colleges. Right. The, the whole uh, hands on technical experience and the expectations, of course, all these three things matter when you try to join an organization or any industry for that matter. So thank you for that. Uh, Gaurav, I'll move to you and I'll, I'd like to understand from this sort of perspective that how you know things have fared out for you. Yeah. Sure, sir. So, so really hiring is generally a two-way street. You know, when someone comes and looks at a startup or any other company which he or she wants to join, they want to see like how what is the culture to recruitment. Uh, the, if you make the interview process too light, then they will judge you on, on the reverse end of it that you know this process is easy to get in. So this means you know these guys uh, like the competitive spirit would be less. So recruitment contests uh, they are majorly valid mainly for up to two years experience like on the like for freshers like it's a very easy tool to weed out uh, one year and two year experience uh, candidate this is a tool to you know showcase what innovations they can do and give them good insights of what they are signing up for like so mainly you know i have hired through hackathons i have also hired through you know interview speed earlier on and now it's hacker rank and you know i have also I try to, you know, when, whenever I've seen like this is a trend that, you know, these days, especially for startups, developers have a mentality that, you know, I will stay here for one year, I'll get a hike and then I'll move to next another startup. Okay. So the age, the age of like of a developer in a company totally depends on how, what is the innovation that he or she is driving? What exactly he's learning? Is he learning new technologies? Is he adopting latest products? Is he adopting what all AWS and Azure are building up? So he, is he like completely com competed with time? And in the interview process also, you know, there is a thing that, you know, nowadays competitive programming has become a must. Like if you're not asking interview, uh, competitive programming in the interview, interview, the candidate would assume that, you know, this, the tech culture is very bad there. And then for the freshers also, uh, I, I have seen a trend that, you know, if you, Ask too much competitive programming, they all have a belief that you know, learn DS algo, learn graphs, uh, like some some questions on graphs, go to geeks for geeks, and you know, then eventually you'll be able to clear the round. But then how do you weed out between those candidates who have done those preparation and all? Is the actual you give them live problem statements that you know uh, this uh, this is a town and this all things are happening, and make them see how they're approaching that problem, real life statements. So all these innovations, all these conversations. With the candidates gives you like how he or she will work with you when they will join the company so these all cultural fits also become an important thing if someone shows uh, like in the recruitment contest and all uh, you also get to get the best of it like you know if there are four people who are competing and if there's a hackathon where you know people work in teams so you get to see your team like how uh, they perform as a team and getting to your question that you know candidates nowadays have realized they've found out the hack to you know crack you know software developer interviews and they just uh, you know look for what's my uh, like notice period especially for experienced folks and how many interviews can i crack so this is a trend that you know we have been obliquely seeing but the good people who are able to who, like we see like who get converted and who do well in the company are those who not only just crack the interview they crack they crack the vision of the vision of their next one to two years like what they will be learning in six months, what they will be learning in 18 months. So hackathons also like give that vision very quickly to those uh, candidates. So, you know, Gaurav, what, you know, while you were speaking, I was just thinking one thing. If uh, developers and IT professionals are getting smart, our tools are also getting smarter. Yeah. You, you, you just can't fool around with that, uh, you know, with the technology tools and you can think you are smart enough to crack a code or maybe just hack a device and do whatever you want to. No, the technological innovation is far, far way better than what you think and what your approach can be. And I'm sure uh, it is being developed by somebody who is into the same domain. 
all the technological innovation that's happening is is being done by some some software developer maybe or, or some some technology experts right so he or she who's thinking on these things has has a, a far vision than what these uh, you know people think of but yet again when it comes to the objective analysis when we you know talk about having people uh, on board i think this is where uh, you know evaluating their uh, skill and competencies you know comes into life right Yeah. So uh, that's that job of a part. I I would uh, agree because uh, you know other experts have also experienced the same, and uh, they think having multiple job offers would actually uh, give them a better job offer finally. But I think uh, the things have changed across domains, and now recruiters have also a fair idea of how things are being built up in the market, right? And I think discussions like this actually give us those insights of how things are happening for everyone. Thank you for that, uh, Tina. I'll move to you. Yeah. So I think Olivia, um, you know, and uh, Gaurav have almost covered uh, what uh, we are talking about. That um, you know, the how to kind of go with these contests and what are the challenges what we are facing. But one of the things what we realized is that uh, when we were doing these contests, that uh, when you think from these freshers' perspective, or when we are doing the campaigns, they are very confused on the technologies. You know, uh, in terms of that, what are the technologies I need to go in for? Or oh, data science is going to be be paying me more, or DBA is paying me more, or there's a demand for this skill. Or oh, I should go to this organization because they are doing work on say. high jump or java or dot net so there's a lot of confusion because of the plethora of skills which are available so we do these contest with a difference okay with uh, some difference so what we do is that we have something called as tectonic where we actually give them insights on each of these technologies what are the um, you know how are these technologies leveraged uh, inside cybage what is the kind of work they would be uh, doing uh, you know be it implementation or be it on the architecture front so we uh, have this uh, 15 day kind of a tectonic um, uh you know like a framework where we train them on all these skills or give them insights on all these skills and after that we probably come up with these contest where we tell them to come up with certain codes and uh, we have also come up with certain rewards uh you know for them like say a top coder or somebody who can uh, hack a particular code or come up with certain solutions to a uh, problem statement so in that way they also get an idea as an organization what is the kind of work they would be getting into and uh, hence uh, help them um, you know we help them uh, to understand more about cybage and um, them to choose cybage over uh, other organizations so i think that is the only difference what we do other than what alivia and gaurav spoke thank you and i it actually gives us a different perspective uh, when it comes to these things and you correct there that uh, some especially the fresh grads i would uh, you know say that they have a confusion when it comes to picking up the right skill because th- there's a herd mentality here uh, okay such you know such profiles are getting higher paid i i think we should go for this right so that direction is very important and uh, we as industry leaders should actually take a call and give them the direction first and then think of uh, you know hiring them because it's very important to have an understanding of what you're going to do Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a very fair point made. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I would like just to add one point. Yes. The candidates yes. have become much more smarter. You know, gone are the days when they used to go in for a brand like the top uh, Fortune 500 companies. Now the Gen Z, what we have, they want to do work where they can make a difference. You know, so the organization and uh, the kind of work also plays a very important role for them. absolutely it does uh, tina and uh, the approach to do things differently and in a diversified manner they they, they are creating a, a beautiful balance between the two i think so that the that, this is that i think the innovation plays a very important role when it comes to having a business approach so thank you for that shikhar i'll move to you uh, you know we we spoke about a lot of things already and i'm sure you have a different perspective here to add on to when it comes to how crucial this can be because uh, doing these things at a larger level and uh, uh you know pooling in so many people uh, especially when it comes to hiring freshers i think you cannot have a selection in 100 or 200 uh, you know applicants so it has to be diverse the approach has to be a little different so just just comment on to that how would you uh, you know like to share yeah i mean obviously we deal with some of these issues at scale we as a group go over more than a million resumes in a year 
So for us, finding a way to programmatically shortlist and assess candidates is very, very important. Right? I think if you just take a step back, you know, all of us keep talking about, uh, and all of us acknowledge the fact that war for talent is real and probably a lot more now than we've ever seen in our careers. At the same time, if you look at it from an organization's perspective, the cost of a wrong hire also has never been more because the difference between what a good hire does and a bad hire does and what it does to the organization's output has never been more starker, right? So from both sides, there is a need for us to get to the right kind of right candidate for the right job. And, you know, as I moved into Quest, you know, one of the one of my favorite quotes that I've I've heard and I've learned is, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, job description is a fantasy and resume is a lie. You know, and the process of recruitment is to find the sweet spot between the two. And I found that, you know, uh, very deep and, you know, very apt. And, you know, whatever we do at the end of the process is to make sure we bridge the gap between these two, if you think about it, right? And uh, and what we're also trying to do as, 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 as organizations who hire is, you know, how can I get more information about the candidate? Gone are the days when, you know, we rely completely on what we call as UGC, user-generated content. So I, as a candidate, generate my content and, and the whole recruitment process actually starts from there, which seems, uh, you know, counterintuitive, right? So, so you're always trying to get more information about the candidate than what the candidate discloses themselves. And therefore, all of these assessments, tests, and, you know, and beyond that, even I don't know, I also don't want to rely on, a, on one particular test as well. If there's a good quality uh, techie, who doesn't have a good enough imprint on uh, GitHub or Stack Overflow, you really have to question if that's a good quality take any which way, right? So I think you, you tend to look at multiple sources uh, before you look you assess the candidate versus relying on user-generated content. The other thing, you know, I completely second the point that Gaurav said, that recruitment process itself, while we are assessing the candidate, the candidate is actually assessing us through the process. You know, how is the process? How aspirational are, are the questions that are asking me? What's the quality of the interviewer? You know, they are also constantly assessing the organization and then deciding whether to go for this organization or not. And therefore, the, the, the better process you have, which makes the candidate feel like, you know, they're being challenged in the process, the higher are your chances of landing the A plus talent, as Gaurav mentioned, right? So for you, contests or any process that you, in fact, I actually make it a point for in crucial hires that we make, the first conversation, actually, I do it. And it's not an interview. I actually go and talk to the candidate and tell them our vision. And then, you know, uh, if they're in the right space, then I actually put them through the process. So, you know, even organizations have to continuously evolve to make sure you're getting interest from the right candidate. So from that perspective, uh, contests and any kind of such activities are very important to also set a statement from a company side. Listen, we are very serious about this hiring process. We've invested in the hiring process. We want to test you the right way. We also want through the contest, we also want to let give you a flavor of the kind of work that we do. You know, like Aliva said, you know, it's also an important way of communicating what kind of work that we do. Right. Uh, also, you know, you're always uh, as a as a as a organization, you are trying to eliminate hiring mistakes hiring biases so you know you're you don't want to rely on a resume and the other thing that you always keep hearing is recruiter efficiency you know if somebody wants to hire a thousand candidates you know really how much bandwidth can you take from your recruiters or from your hiring managers you know these contests and very well constructed contests actually takes a lot of load away from hiring teams because you're going through that assessment as part of this process right so it also helps you in many cases time to hire right because you're basically saying you know part of my process where I don't have any capacity constraint. I can process any number of candidates through that part of the process. And only when I really need to invest time behind hiring, I actually put in the real capacity of my organization behind that. So in, in whichever way you look at it, whether it's you know uh, making a statement of intent that the process is really of top notch and therefore you know uh, the best candidates need to pay attention and come in, uh, making them familiarize with your work uh, you know, testing them under different circumstances, apart from just a normal question answer on under some pressure in a contest way. All of this is valuable information that you get from the candidate, you know, about the candidate, which goes a, a long way in terms of matching, you know, so that your hiring mistakes, time to hire, hiring biases, most of that get eliminated, right? So that's how we look at it. And, you know, like, uh, like some of the panelists mentioned, you also have to be clear about where the contest works and where the contests don't work 
uh, at what level and at for for what role do you assign what kind of a weightage to this contest for early in career professionals techies you know you would you, you might want to rely a lot more on contests where you are maybe assessing knowledge but where you're assessing skills though right now you know a lot of uh, companies are coming up with assessments and contests for skills but there you still at this point in time at least you still want to make sure there's as it's enough human element and weightage given to the human element of assessment so you know it's a complex topic but something that we cannot do without honestly i think uh, you know uh, contests and and coding contests and otherwise is something that today i don't think any organization can do without absolutely i think they they uh, they are some of the uh, most important uh, remedies that we have come across when it comes to remote working and hiring because without them it is i think next to impossible to know somebody's uh, skills and uh, you know understand and evaluate how good they are at their jobs or their skills that they have just mentioned in the resume because a lot of people put across a lot of things on their resume but it's not uh, you know necessary that it would match when it comes to their evaluation and the final uh um, maybe solving the business problem that we see right so that that that's a very important point now when we uh, you know speak about uh, so we be uh, you know focused on to uh, how important these uh, you know objective analysis uh, in terms of hackathons or contests or idathon whatever you, you host but i would want to uh, you know know uh, from the perspective of the time to hire because uh, i mean the entire process of uh, rolling out uh, with first of all actually sourcing the candidates having the applicants uh, uh, you know have your attention that you have a job vacancy for a particular profile and uh, then rolling out the questions to them then uh, you know maybe putting a benchmark of score that this is what would qualify you to the you know, next round and then you'd put a lot of filters and then final round of maybe interview which would be maybe a virtual interaction that you would do and then finally decide it right so i think uh, that itself is a span of time i mean how do you look at uh, the you know the time to hire when it comes to uh, these uh, recruitment contests how do you think this minimizes that or you think it, it it's just a part of the process and it should remain the same or it remains the same so uh, you know i would like to start with tina here tina how do you think this is uh, you know an effect on the time to hire yeah i think uh, pandemic uh, you know with pandemic it industry has seen a boom thanks to digitization transformation and remote working okay and uh, we see that uh, the skills also which are there that have gone um, you know in uh, demand uh, lately are common across uh, you know most of the it organizations okay and uh, in fact uh, we have we have been recruiting like never before you know uh, uh, with this boom is what we are seeing and the more time we take it is just going to increase the cost of hire and also the risk of losing the candidate because that candidate whom we are approaching through these campaigns or contest or through any other recruit methods that candidate is not only evaluating us as an organization but also evaluating 10 other organizations and obviously the more time you take there are chances that you lose the candidate so that is where it is important for us to be more prompt okay we cannot take that traditional time what we had is that first you do the technical interview then you take a weeks time to kind of come back with the scores and then you do the first screening and then you do the second screening and thanks to the tools which are available today thanks to data science and machine learning which is uh, or the agile way of recruitment which is there that helps us to eliminate all the screening uh, um, you know of uh, whatever we need in terms of shortlisting that what is the criteria we require so that also reduces the time and the only time which is spent uh, for us now is only in the final round of the interview in fact we are also evaluating uh, processes where we can do away with this face to face round and at, for the junior level come up with only uh, say the agile way of recruiting uh, to reduce these uh, this time what we are spending at this point of time yeah but in short the more time you take uh, it is just going to increase your cost and lose the candidate so you have to be prompt 
thank you i think uh, that that has a very valid point uh, i don't think anybody has patience in this remote working uh, arena to actually wait for somebody and as gaurav mentioned people come to you with a lot of offers in hand and they would actually warn you that i have you know a couple of offers in my hand and i would uh, you know definitely uh, if if you don't give it to me somebody else will so uh, keeping those things in mind i think we have to be smart enough to uh you know evaluate in, in the right manner and yes when it comes to giving them uh the right uh, reason for not being hired i think objective analysis plays a very important role that you are validating yourself that this is the best uh, mask score that you wanted and you've not qualified that right earlier people used to wait for the hrs to get back to them which never happened but now things have changed be it uh, an it job or a non it job for both of the things i think uh, this objective analysis has helped uh, people get, you know one know their uh, maybe the weaknesses that they have when you talk about the strengths and the weaknesses the comparison that we do and at the same time it it somewhere or the other helps them uh, to improve themselves so this this benchmarking is is something that that is supported by these uh, mediums i should say uh i'll move to aliva and i would want to uh, you know know from the synopsis perspective that uh, how this is uh, for the time like time to hire uh, angle how do you see it uh sure supriti and i can't agree more to what tina mentioned that um given the situation where we are in in a in a way i think everybody has tapped on to uh, the crisis and like they say never let a crisis go waste we have been as well hiring like we did never before um and the time to hire uh, again latching on to tina's point that the promptness is something that actually helps us in tapping onto the right talent because each one of them has probably a bouquet of um options available with them now these contests also help us to um you know uh, do a smart scaling because you are actually tapping onto a lot of talent at the same time you are not going through a sequential process or an assembly line for that matter you are cutting down on a lot of these uh, uh you know time which is of a lead and a lag if you really apply a lean methodology at the same time you're also keeping the interest uh, of the candidates really alive right because uh, they are excited they are keen to know what comes next and uh, it also gives them a perspective about the organization early on uh, now one of the things that we applied uh, in these contests is that we provided them an enabling ecosystem as well where uh, some of the senior r&d managers and leaders were assigned as mentors to the few finalists um, maybe teams or individuals depending on the contest that we ran and that uh, gave them also uh, in a way a boost to understand the technology better so many a times what happens is the candidate goes back for a preparation or you are giving them an assignment and they're coming back with a Uh, lead time in between now here the readiness to respond to real time business scenarios real time problem situations is a lot higher so these contests also give you um, a great opportunity to uh, have a promptness inbuilt into the design itself right and the um, acquaintance of the individual or the candidates especially for freshers i'm talking about which uh, generally is the highest uh, a uh, number of uh, you know recruitment that you actually do in a particular year um that brings them closer and the selection numbers also go up in case of laterals as well um it sort of helps us in building in a familiarity and uh, through multiple assessment rounds you are actually gauge into the suitability of the individual to the role uh, so in many different ways uh, the parameters which are used to assess an individual these contests really help to reduce the time to hire like i said by design itself sukriti thank you aliva i think that that completely uh, adds on to what uh, tina just mentioned so now uh, shekhar and gorav have a different question for both of you we spoke about the time to hire and the processes that's in do you know those things are involved and how we do it now uh, i think it's 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 more relevant and important to have an understanding of the unique skill sets so i think uh, every every uh, job vacancy that you have every um, profile that you try to look for there is this unique set of skill sets that you i when it comes to hiring that person and uh, having at gorab you just you know gorab and shekhar both of you mentioned that uh, uh, 
the right questions, the, the right evaluation sent out to the right candidate matters. The kind of uh, approach that that we should actually put in there. So, uh, Mr. Shikhar, help me understand that how recruitment contests help companies hire the hands-on professionals with the unique skill sets that they are eyeing. Yeah, I think uh, uh, you're right. These days, uh, I mean, we also run uh, India's largest IT staffing company. You know, apart from our own internal needs and stuff like that. So, uh, the kind of skill sets for which we hire is really diverse, right? And it's actually, uh, you know, humanly impossible to even have the interviewing talent in house. You know, sometimes when I see some of these requirements, I don't know if it's a if it's a spelling mistake or if it's a real technology because there's just so many of them these days you know uh, you don't even know you know there are like literally hundreds of them and you know uh, and oftentimes we find ourselves campering around to even find the right interviewer and this is where i think you know well structured and and designed recruitment contests can really give you that scale and and really reduce a lot of operational burden on the system you know, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of these recruitment uh, companies which do this are doing really good job, you know, in terms of making sure that they are up to date in terms of, you know, from a tech stack perspective, you know, having all the right kinds of contests, right? And and, and I think, you know, they've also gamified it really well. So it helps you engage the candidate well. And, uh, and you know, from that perspective, you know, it's also important for, you know, from a, uh, a which technology or skill set are you hiring for? Which experience are you hiring for? One? And therefore, you know, what kind of a, uh, you know, service provider or particular contest that you use. And, you know, uh, right now, you know, we've got our hiring teams really kind of, you know, putting that mapping structure in place. You know, if it's this was this and this, then, you know, we use this kind of a contest and not just in a tech from a tech perspective, but even from a non-tech perspective, right? And 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 now there are a lot of case-based contests also, for example, you know, many years back when I joined McKinsey and, and the whole world knows about case, case study-based hiring because of, you know, the consulting firms. And now we want to use the same case-based contests, uh, you know, to hire product managers, to hire business analysts. So I think there's so much variety that's coming in, even in the contests. It is important for the recruiters and the recruiting organization to be aware of, you know, what is out there so that you could also leverage and use them the right way. You know, uh, so from that perspective, you know, uh, we actually encourage a lot of conversations between our recruitment teams and startups. There's a lot of young, bright people who are trying to solve this problem, you know, maybe for a particular tech stack, maybe for a particular role or, you know, for example, we have second largest uh, customer care business in the country we have 35000 people who do customer care you know and customer care hiring itself is very different and therefore there's so con people who come up with contests for hiring for customer care professionals right so i think you know there's a lot of variety out there uh, the onus is on on uh, on the recruitment teams to be completely aware of what you can leverage and then use them appropriately i think from that perspective you know uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of homework that uh, that organizations also need to do to be able to leverage it's not like you know this one test out there that kind of you know meets the need for all of your hiring needs that's not going to happen so you know as much as people are coming up with these tests the onus is on us to to understand how do we leverage this as well and so i think you know uh like i said we can't do away without this test they're they're absolutely needed time to hire you know uh tina and aleva has said you know without the right time to hire they have no no chance to even land the good candidates into your process. Uh, and so, you know, uh, to me, I just can't see uh, a process of hiring without the right kind of contests and pre-screening technology tools that we use. I mean, it's just not possible otherwise. That's right, Shrikhar. And, you know, we at TechGeek, we host uh, several, uh, you know, uh, ideas and hackathons and contests we have to uh, you know, yeah, huge I'll events. Give you a and simple example of how all pervasive contests are, right? Uh, can you imagine even if you were to hire a food delivery boy, you could actually mm -hmm. have a contest where, okay. where these food delivery boys are used, are asked to find out using Google Maps different locations at the fastest possible time. So everything can be gamified and you can build a contest if you know actually what are the skill sets that you're looking to hire for. Absolutely, you know, and uh, I think uh, uh, brands are equally trying to leverage uh, this, uh, you know, medium so much that uh, their business problems are given them as use cases and the solutions that they, uh, you know, they come across and people who participate, the kind of uh, presentations and the solutions that these people offer 
I, I, so this is my personal experience that the brands who engaged with tagging and code gladiators or tagging geek goddess, I should uh, actually mention, both both places, both the contests that we uh, you know host every year, uh, we are we are ourselves surprised as we leverage this for different organizations, and they are surprised with the kind of solutions that these people have. And uh, sometimes the organizations internally aren't able to uh, you know pull the kind of solutions or the idea that people externally sitting outside participating can give them, right? So I think uh, this this actually fairly incorporates a lot of uh, business problems and the complexities which you can get uh, solved with different and innovative ideas. So that's that's another part that we can look at when it comes to the recruitment analysis altogether. Uh, Gaurav, I would move to you and uh, tell me from biggest perspective that uh, how uh, you know this entire picking up because I, I know you you uh, handle the tech part also and uh, picker is, is your brainchild. So. How do you see uh, building up your tech team and having the right skill sets when it comes to uh, these uh, contests? Yeah. yeah. So, really, like uh, I heard Shekhar on the delivery boy problem uh, five years back. I myself have hired delivery boys. And, you know, we used a very a good solution at that point of time. There was a company whom we gave certain puzzles and we, we like outsourced the interview process as a SaaS to that company. So, mm -hmm. so we were able to get you know those candidates to us who have already clarified those puzzle level like chasing uh, the best route you know how ethical they are because they would be collecting COD COD from end customers and then you know what exactly is the kind of loan that they will do how they look this job as a job is that just for a temporary reason or what is the exact mindset so setting the JD right be it for delivery boy be it for VP engineering setting the JD right is very important. And then another point that the interviewer. So a lot of days, you know, interviewers, uh, you know, they get lazy and they, you know, reschedule, reschedule interviews, and that increases your time to hire as well. And also, you know, if they are also not clear about what exactly they want to hire, if someone is through referral, so the the person who is referred has he clarified about the company, has he clarified about the role, and what kind of experience has he shared with the candidate? So. One thing is like finding the exact skill set would be very tough. It's very subjective, uh, you know, thing is. But, you know, there are certain aspects to a certain role in a BU where, you know, you can assign that, you know, map this candidate on these seven to eight points and what the uh, match ratio that you're getting or the match percentage. And you should obviously go for the higher match percentages. One thing that I have personally used very well in Picker to reduce my time to hire in this scenario is this interview as a SaaS thing. So when we hire through colleges as well, or you know, when we post on a LinkedIn regarding the SD1, SD2 role, we get lots of applications. And you know, what I do is like, you know, first there is a test, then you know, the people who come out of test, I outsource those people to these new products which are emerging in the hiring market, which are selling interview as a SaaS. So there are a lot of folks from Fang and you know, new startup world, you know, take interviews on the fly. So rescheduling doesn't become a problem from the interviewer end. And you know these guys give a, have given us better results. Like you know they they reduce the numbers from 300 to 30, and then uh, from test you can reduce from 300 to 30, and then from 30 to five they're able to reduce. And those five are like almost the people whom you will have to reverse pitch. Why they should join bigger? Those five are not those ones like you know where hardly one out of those five would be a person who might be a average person. So this thing has helped me uh, reduce my time to hire as well. And you know, in startups, you are expected to deliver faster. So time is something that you are chasing for your business aspirations, VC aspirations. For every aspiration, you are always killing the time. So this time to hire becomes a, even a bigger problem for a startup because it can kill, kill the innovation journey in the startup. So I think this is where uh, the entire automation plays a very important role. And uh, it it uh, actually helps you adhere to the timelines that you decide and actually respects the time of the other person, right? The whom you're trying to hire. Yeah. So fantastic. Uh, that, that's that's what the word I have uh, for the discussion today. Thank you so much, uh, Dina, Shekhar, Gaurav, and Ariva. I had an amazing time uh, with interaction, uh, you know, in, in the kind of insights that everybody has shared today. And uh, now it's time for me to conclude the session. So I would request, uh, uh, you know, each one of you to give me the closing remarks for the session. Aliva, I'd start with you. 
Thank you, Supriti. I think uh, uh, it was amazing being part of this panel and uh, hear out on um, the different practices that are happening in different industries. I mean, this in itself is such a homogeneous panel, uh, heterogeneous panel for that matter, right? Uh, so thank you, Supriti, for putting this together. And thank you, fellow panel members, for sharing perspective. I learned a lot. And uh, happy meeting you out here as well. Thanks, Oliva. Gaurav? Yeah, thanks, Sukriti, for the opportunity and, you know, like exposing me to such a fantastic and experienced panel. Really, it was very insightful how hiring happens on scale. And, you know, would love to know more and see how hiring innovations are happening. For me, I always had a thought that, you know, a lot of hiring innovations are scaling in India. But still, you know, the Nokri.com is the go-to place for everyone <laughs> till now. But eventually, you know, I see this problem as a needle in a haystack problem, but evolving with time. Things are changing and it would take some time. With India, it always, uh, you know, takes time. But uh, when it comes to innovation, we are the best. So uh, let's 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 be very hopeful. Uh, Shekhar? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's a rich conversation. Uh, and like Oliver said, you know, uh, it's always good to hear diverse perspectives because there's always something that you can pick up which you could use specifically for your use case. So, you know, uh, I'm going back richer having heard uh, inputs from all of you and, uh, and hopefully I've been able to add to the conversation as well. Thank you so much for having me here and for the opportunity to learn. Thank you, Shekhar. It was actually a pleasure to have you and the insights that uh, each one of you have shared. I'm sure I am taking a lot of things, uh, uh, you know, home uh, in terms of uh, analysis that, um, you know, my intent was actually. So thank you for that. Uh, Tina? Yeah, so one thing I'm glad that, um, you know, it's a serious pleasure that we all are sailing in the same boat. So it is not just, uh, you know, my organization, which is going through all this. And uh, yes, it was very good to hear the panel and the insights and uh, the innovative ideas what each of the panel members are using. Uh, one thing I would just like to add is that um, we are working on such cute timelines somewhere and we have so many of these tools and chatbots which basically come up with this intervention to identify the skills but somewhere the human intervention would always be required because that would help or ensure that uh, the culture of the organization is not getting diluted just to meet the numbers or to get those skills. So human intervention is uh, your to stay and yes uh, i echo the sentiments of all the panel it was a uh, pleasure being yeah thank you so much tina and now i would uh, actually invite and i call upon ayush uh, who is uh, the C regional sales manager for enterprise at tegic for the vote of thanks Thank you so much, Sukriti. Thank you so much. I second your thought. Fantastic is the word. This has been such an amazing panel. It was indeed a very, very interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Tina. Thanks, Aliva. Thanks, Shekhar and Gaurav for being part of the panel and sharing your thoughts, views, and experiences with the audiences on how uh, you know changing landscapes are compelling uh, corporations to explore creative pursuits and uh, recruitment contests for tech and non-tech hiring have seen gaining significant adoption in the, in the past few years, not just for the tech hiring, in fact, non-tech hiring for non-tech hiring also. Uh, Shekhar uh, shared a few viewpoints, and in fact, Gaurav also mentioned about uh, his experience as to how he used, uh, you know, uh, uh, contest as a medium for uh, hiring the delivery guys uh, in the past. So this has been gaining a lot of uh, traction, adoption from various uh, uh, corporates. It's, it's a go-to mean for hiring uh, at this point in time. It does. It just does not help in, uh, you know, uh, spotting the right talent or a right fit profile for your hiring requirement. It also further adds to, uh, you know, building the uh, reference pool. It also helps in generating ideas. It uh, helps in eliminating hiring biases. It can give you global coverage. It helps you in identifying the team working capability of, of uh, the folks that you want to hire for. It also helps you in building a very rich candidate experience. So. Uh, uh, Aliva spoke about uh, spotting the right talent early on, just for the uh, sake of giving the experience about uh, where Synopsys is good at. And likewise, Gaurav also spoke about you know giving the right experience to the candidates so that the so that they understand what they are going to be doing once they enter the organization. So these are the these are the benefits, these are the advantages which uh, you know such formats of hiring can bring into you. Uh, 
the session was very very insightful uh, you know it helped us the views from all of you uh, and uh, also helped us understand how recruitment contest could add value to the overall uh, you know recruitment strategy if practiced and executed diligently for hiring and assessing tech, tech candidates uh, i would like like to thank each one of you for uh, taking time out and joining us for the session today and we look forward to having uh, many on many and more such conversations as we move forward thank you so much thank you thanks yeah, ayush thank you so much and uh, to the audience thank you everyone for joining us if you are looking to hire and evaluate tech professionals you can try our ai power tech assessment platform called speed hire that offers 360 degree solutions it's time to sign off stay tuned for more thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thanks